Hello and welcome to Bite Size Tech. I'm your host, Rogue, and today a word from our sponsor, Crypto.com, home of the Visa card that pays up to 8% in rewards and the app that pays you up to 14% annually on your crypto stake. Join more than 10 million users on the world's fastest growing crypto app as you trade with confidence on the world's fastest and most secure crypto exchange. Tech has more information and a special sign up offer at the end of this video. Uh, next topic, one hour and two, two minutes. Yeah, look at this. Forza Horizon 5 PC requirements. Check this out. So the for, for, Forza Horizon 5 PC requirements list the RTX 3080 and the RX 6800 XT under ideal specs. Yikes. Wow. wow. But look at the minimum requirements. A 970 or an RX 470? Those are ancient. What if you want 10 frames a second? So yeah, it's uh, take a look at this chart here. This is a handy chart. Mm. So for minimum spec, they claim that this will run on an i5 <laughs> 4460 from 2014 with a GTX 970 or a Ryzen 3 1200 with an RX 470 four gigs of VRAM, eight gigs of system RAM, and 110 gigs of hard drive space. Sure, okay, yeah, good luck with that. Um, I, I guess. Or the recommended spec is a RX 590 and a, see, here's, here's where I object, sweetie. Yes. These are not the same. A the, 1070 and a 590? The 1070 is 50% faster than a 590. These are not the same card. And these aren't the same either. Uh, uh, a, uh, the Ryzen 5 uh, 1500X, which is really not that good of a CPU. This is four cores and eight threads, but it's Zen 1. Whereas the i5-8400, it's only six cores, six threads, but it's a faster architecture. I would take an i5-8400 over a 1500X all day long. That's not even a question in my mind. Eight gigs of VRAM and 16 gigs of RAM. And then the ideal spec is, of course, an 8-core, 16-thread chip and all of the whatevers. SSD. 16 gigs of VRAM and 16 gigs of main system RAM. Actually, in fairness, Forza Horizon 5 is probably the sort of game that probably doesn't need a lot of RAM. So long as you have a clean test bench. What I don't like about things like this is it doesn't tell you, like... Resolution, detail settings, yes, and frame rate. That. If it would say 1440p, 100 frames per second, ultra detail, yes. it would mean something. Yes. Like, yes. Exactly. That's what's missing. That's exactly what's missing. That minimum spec might be 720p, minimum detail, 30 frames per second. Okay. Sure. I mean, yeah, but... Ugh. I'm sure there's people who think that's perfectly fine. <laughs> I'm sure there is. I have to put a poll in chat. A poll? Which spec do you think is the real requirements for Forza Horizon 5? Okay. Min? Recommended, help if I can spell recommended. Oh, that's what spell check's for. That's what I have spell check for. Ideal. Or, or a bunch of BS. <laughs> well, let's let them answer that for a minute. Why don't you talk about the overall gaming experience rather than a frame rate or minimum requirements to physically launch a game? So for me, when I'm gaming, um, in I'm gonna get a cup up. Yeah, you want to boil your jug? Please. In okay. World of Warships, it's it's not the frame rate. It's there's so many screens that have to load in World of Warships. There's the armory, and they have several um, pages that have to open. There's the oh my gosh, there is the container page. There is the we have a clan. So there's the clan, all the stuff to do with the clan running that. It's, 
it's moving around within the game that is my user experience. Um, the results page at the end um, after you finish a game and the better CPU, the better GPU, the whole computer, the more better that is, the more faster it loads for me. Because I, I was using the i7-4790K um, and Tex on, the <laughs> on his 980XE and it would just take forever to load all the screens. I mean, it took forever to get into the game. It took forever for it to patch. It, I mean, it was just, took a long time. And you wouldn't know that it takes a long time until you start using all the different computers. So like the 4790K, and then we had, I had a i5-3600X, and then there was um, the i9-9900K. And all of those, and then Tex 980XE, I mean, that's four different computers there, let alone all the other ones. You, you notice it once you get to compare, but if you don't ever get to compare, meh. Yours is boiling, or jugging. Thank you. It's, it's thinking about it. Um, internet speed to some extent, but it's just moving around in the game. If, if six cores just took forever for things to open in that World of Warships game. Like my 1080, uh, 10850K that I got now, so much nicer. I can click on something and it opens. I don't have to sit there and wait for the game. Adding and removing signals and flags and camos to the ship, c configuring your captain, yep. going to the tech tree in the game, yep. uh, going to the armory, uh, the the usability dip. It's like, well, uh, all that matters is your frame rate. All the ca all the campaigns and waiting all for the, the results at the end of it. Yes, selecting new missions. Yep, that is so much faster on your new machine mm -hmm. than your old machine, and your old machine was no slouch. I mean, a Ryzen 5 3600X is not junk. Um, Solomon says, to be fair, Rogue doesn't seem like an average consumer. Um, I consider myself an average consumer. And as an average consumer, I get to see how much better life is with better components. That's what I will say. As an average consumer, it's a much nicer experience with better components. Here's a fun one. What? How many of our viewers right now have air conditioning? Uh, Why don't we go ahead and answer the poll that oh, we did first? Do, yeah. What, which spec do you think is the real requirements for Forza Horizon 5? Recommended 48%, ideal 33%, min 9%, results 8%. So most people are happy with the recommended specs of a 1070 and an 8400 or a 590 and a 1500X, 8 wow. gigs of VRAM and 16 gigs. Do you think are okay with that for a brand new game? Wow. That is a four-year-old CPU and a four-year-old video card for a new game. It'll run it. 1080p, medium detail, 60 frames a second. You reckon? <sighs> It'd be interesting to take this and on those computers actually see what you get for that. You could make a whole YouTube channel out of just testing recommended specs, specs. for games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they all post them. I imagine an i5-8400 and a GTX 1070 will be fine for Forza Horizon 5. It's actually fine for a lot of games today. But it is just that. It's fine. If you ne ignorant, somebody in chat said, ignorance is bliss. 
Yeah. If it's fine, if you don't know any better, you just go, well, that's just how it runs. I had this experience 30 years ago. In 1991, I was playing Wing Commander 2 on my 386DX25. It felt slow and sluggish, but I didn't have anything to compare it to. I was like, okay, well, this is just how it is. And then I went over to a friend's house who had a 4633. Not 46, a 386.33, sorry. That's fine. No, he had a 386.33. It was also a gateway, believe it or not. And I was blown away by what 8 more megahertz bought you. It cleaned that game straight up. It was what was missing. And it just, I couldn't, I went back home. And I just, I couldn't play it on my machine anymore. Oh dear. It ruined me. It ruined you. How many of you have a Visa card that pays you up to 8% on every purchase? Crypto.com offers an amazing deal on their Visa card with cash back that is an unbeatable deal. No annual fee, no signup fee, no credit checks, no interest payments. It works just like a prepaid debit card, allowing you to spend your money anywhere Visa is accepted. But wait, there's more. Get your Spotify, Netflix, and Amazon Prime subscriptions 100% paid for by Crypto.com. You heard me right. Use your new Crypto Visa card to pay for your subscriptions and get 100% back in rewards. Earning 8% on your new Visa card is awesome, but how would you like to earn up to 14% interest on your crypto holdings? If you're holding crypto for investment, inflation protection, or price speculation, it can be frustrating to feel like your money is just parked. Yes, you really can earn up to 14% annual interest on your crypto paid weekly directly to your account to spend however you like. The interest is paid in the same token that you're holding. So if you have Bitcoin staked, you are in Bitcoin. If you have Ethereum staked, you are in Ethereum, and so on. Flexible terms are offered, including zero lock, so you can withdraw your crypto anytime you like without restrictions, or you can hold for one or three month terms for a higher rate of return. Of course, you can buy, sell, and exchange 100 plus cryptocurrencies with 20 plus fiat currencies using bank transfers or your credit and debit card at true cost. Crypto.com is first and foremost a crypto exchange. There is so much more to explore, I have barely scratched the surface. DeFi features including a private wallet with full control of your private keys, margin and derivatives trading options for advanced traders, crypto credit allows you to borrow against your holdings with no deadlines or credit checks, crypto NFTs allows you to explore the new world of non-fungible tokens, crypto pay allows you to pay any merchant with crypto and you earn up to 10% back in rewards, and that's not even everything they have to offer. If you're looking for the place to be in crypto, use our link in the video description below to sign up today, you'll get a $25 crypto sign up bonus and 30 days of 0% transaction fees on credit and debit card purchases of crypto. It supports the channel and it gets you a great offer to get started in the world of crypto.